Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right, all right, all right. I want to say good morning and welcome to all that are on Zoom and on Facebook and all of you that are here in the sanctuary. A few shout outs, amen, this morning before we go into our worship experience. One is try my best to keep up on some of the events that goes on in our community. Um, I want to give a shout out, amen, to our high school, Lafayette High School. I want to give the girls a shout out. I believe they are state bound, amen. They won on yesterday. And then also to our boys basketball team that lost yesterday in the regions, amen, was almost state bound. So we want to give a shout out, amen, to uh, Coach George Pickett Jr. and his father, Trusty Pickett, and the rest of those that work so diligently with our youth, amen. So we want to give a shout out to them. I also want to give a shout out to our Christian Ed, amen, for the Black History Month, amen. This has been a wonderful celebration. We want to thank them. We want to thank all of those that participated. Amen. All right, let us stand. It is worship time. Amen. In the house of the Lord here at Shallow Baptist Church. Amen. It's time for worship. I say it again. It's time for worship. Let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath Praise ye the Lord. God, we invite you into our presence. We ask, Lord God, that you would rain on us, Lord God, that you would fill our cups, Lord God, until they overflow. Now, God, give us a worship experience like never before. Touch us, Lord God, and allow, Lord God, our worship be for real. In your name, God, we give you glory. We give you honor, and we give you praise. Right at this time, the praise team will give us our opening, and then I will turn this service over, our worship experience over, to our worship leader. Thank you.
check. Michael, check one. I, I hear myself. Thank you. Good morning, Charlotte. Blessings and honor for all that he's done for me. Is there anybody in here who can say thank you, Jesus, for blessing me, for blessing me? Came from a mighty long way. Anybody in here? I can. Amen. Amen. Brought me from a mighty long way. I say good morning to everybody here in Shiloh on Facebook and on Zoom. We bring you greetings from right here at Shiloh Baptist Church in downtown Croker. And now we're going to go, into the, go further into the program with scripture um, and prayer by Deacon Floyd Bundy, following by the chant by the Shiloh Baptist Church praise team in that order. Well, good morning, everyone. Not only good morning to all of you in the congregation, but good morning to all those on Facebook and on Zoom. This morning, we'll be coming out of the book of Hebrews. We'll be coming out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, out of the King James Version. Wherefore, singing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Did you hear that again? Let us set aside the sin that so easily besets us. And he said, and let us run with patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Blessed be the reading of his word. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we come to you right now, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we also would run this race. That we, O oh, Heavenly Father, will set aside those things that easily beset us. Oh, Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves unto you this day. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that you will find us holy and acceptable unto you. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that even though sometimes we do not what we're supposed to do, we say not what we're supposed to say, we don't do those things, Lord, that we're supposed to do. But Lord, we pray right now that you would forgive us for all our sins and all those things that we have done against your will. Lord, we thank you for your presence right now. We feel your presence, Lord. May you hung, hover over us right now. Give us exceeding and great joy. Give us, O oh Heavenly Father, the peace that passes all understanding. Give us the hope that is found in you. May we ever feel your presence. May we ever feel your joy. Give us, O oh Heavenly Father, peace even in the midst of a storm. Those who are saddened by those things that are happening in our lives. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you would change us, Lord. That we could recognize and understand that your presence should always be felt amongst your children. You have told us, oh Lord, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And now we pray, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, that you would lead this service, Lord. Lead and guide each and every one of us that we would say and do those things that are pleasing in thy sight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. We want to thank Deacon Floor Bundy for the scripture in the morning prayer and the chant from our Child Baptist Church praise team. We say thank you. As we come to the end of Black History Month, let us continue each day to celebrate the rich culture and the history in which the United States of America was built. We started this month with learning of the many strong women who stood up by, who stood by their men um, as history was changing for the betterment of all mankind. Then we met the Moses of her time, as she was often called, Harriet Tubman. Then while I was absent last week from church, I saw on Facebook that um, our president, former president Barack Obama had stopped by last week. Today, we are coming back home with someone whose roots run deep within our community. We have seen this young lady grow from a toddler to a young woman. Coming with spoken words, please help me welcome our very own Ms. Raquel Strong. Good afternoon. First, giving honor to God, Pastor Sutherland, First Lady, and all of you assembled in the presence of the Lord today, I will be reciting an original poem titled, Set Apart. We, children of the diaspora, have been set apart. What a blessing it is to be set apart, for anti-blackness is proven wrong every time the spirit of discernment reminds us of our worth. How is it that we bear the fruit of our ancestors' wildest dreams, but still fail to recognize the black excellence we hold within? It is said that race is merely a social construct, with the human genome being 99.9% .9 the same. But there was never an explanation for why entire communities are belittled and demeaned based on how much melanin is possessed. We complain about the wideness of our noses and thickness of our lips but every time they provide the opportunity to breathe a new life, in and out, in and out. Generation after generation, we criticize ourselves and our children, our nieces and our nephews, for not having good hair, when God handpicked every follicle on our head to be healthy. From the way our curls, our kinks, and our coils reach to the heavens, to the way our skin glistens in the sunlight, we have been set apart. We inhabit every shade and hue of the complexion and complexity as our pigment pulsates, tints and tones like the earth beneath our feet from which we were formed. Our aesthetic can never quite be emulated or imitated regardless of how much others try to replicate or duplicate. Jesus has the fair skin, the blue eyes and wavy hair and all the paintings, but just how many of us are willing to admit that he had skin like bronze and hair like wool? Africa runs through our veins like the resilience and brilliance of the trailblazers and innovators that came before us. We too embrace and embody black boy joy and black girl magic because we've inherited those ethereal properties from above. Our story never began or ended with slavery, colonization, and segregation. Mass incarceration and police brutality don't define us just as colorism, texturism, and featureism shouldn't divide us. Whether apartheid or Jim Crow, we overcome time and time again in the footsteps of the civil rights movement and Black Lives Matter. We have been set apart in the same manner that we have been blessed and highly favored. The word says God is love and love is God, but why don't we love ourselves in the way that he loves us? For he made us who we are, fearfully and wonderfully created in his image. And we, children of the diaspora, cannot expect others to value us if we don't value one another. Thank you, and happy Black History Month. Homegrown, right here. Roots right here in downtown Croker. 
Let's, we've seen this young lady grow, grow up, as we've seen many of our young kids, Trey on the drums and all the other kids who have come up in this church here. And, and, we are, and I can say that, you know, if I speak on behalf of the church, I'm happy for you guys. And you guys are doing a wonderful thing um, for our church and for God. We certainly appreciate what you, what you guys have done and just continue to do, continue doing. So this is for y'all. All right. We know we're going to have now selections by the praise team, followed by the sermon by our Reverend Dr. Myron Sutherland, invitation altar call, the prayer list, special prayer, selections, followed by communion, and then the benediction in that order. May God continue to bless you and yours. Amen. Praise God. Give God a hand clap of praise just for the magnificent things that he's doing. To our pastor, to Dr. Myron Sutherland, to our First Lady Gillian Sutherland, to the mother of this church, Mother Hazel Pierce, and to all of you on Zoom and Facebook, the praise team truly greets you. We are truly delighted to be in your presence, to just to praise God through song. Anybody love to praise God through song? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get fed of the word, but sometimes these songs really touch and resonate our souls. And we just want to sing a few songs. We just thank God this morning for our new member, Sister Sherry Jones. Give her a hand clap of praise. More surprises to come with the praise team. But we're just grateful and humble to all of our musicians here. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody know that God gives you joy? Yes, it does. Hallelujah. Yes, it does. Put those hands together. Unspeakable joy. Unspeakable joy. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you be in my brokenness, I got you love instead of pain. There's freedom though you captured me. I got joy instead of mourning. If you be in my brokenness, oh I got, I got you love. Joy. Down deep Lord, in my I soul. feel your joy. Down deep 
Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the joy. Unspeakable joy. Oh, I thank you for the joy, God. Everlasting joy. No matter what you're going through, God will give you unspeakable joy. Unspeakable joy. Everlasting joy. When you can't lift your head up, God will give you joy. Unspeakable joy. Lord, I thank you for the joy. I thank you for the joy. Lord, I thank Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the train to Jordan Picking up passengers From coast to coast All you need is faith To play the diesel humming You don't need no ticket Just thank the Lord Let me hear you say Just to save his own And pity on those Whose chances grow thinner Must know that in play Was the kingdom strong Let me hear you say Chuck, I'm looking at him. I won't pick with him. We thank God for the praise team, amen, and for our musicians. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I want to invite you very quickly to the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 1 through 9 out of the King James Version. Verse 1 reads, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and there at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, 
having five porches. In these days, a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, troubled the water. And whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, Another step is down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The word of God for the people of God, you may be seated. Father, we bless you, we glorify you, we thank you for this opportunity of preaching and teaching and proclaiming your word. Once again, now, God, because of who I am, as humanist as I am, Lord, I ask that you would once again hide me behind thy cross, that all of your people see less of me, but yet, God, all of thee. Not every word that I may say, every thought I may utter would be clearly from heaven. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Want to use for a thought this morning, by any means necessary. By any means necessary. By any means necessary. That saying signifies that whatever you are trying to accomplish by any means that you are trying to accomplish it to reach your goal and your aim. Malcolm X used this phrase in a speech in June the 28th, 1964 at a rally of an Afro-American unity in New York where he called for freedom, justice, equality by any means necessary. When we look at this title, by any means necessary, I believe as a believer in Christ, I should have an attitude by my faith, that whatever comes up against me, I declare victory. Lord, by whatever means necessary, whatever it takes, how long it might take, if I have to pray, then I will. If I have to separate myself, I will. If I need to shift some things around in my life, then I will. If I have to walk through some valleys, Lord God, I will. But by any means necessary. This morning, I, I find this story about a landman who has been paralyzed for 38 long years. Paralyzed, lying on a mat, yet depending on people. To bring him to this pool, this certain place, every day. I, I would assume that he had relatives. I would assume that he had neighbors. I would assume that he had some church folk. I would assume that he had some so-called friends that would bring him to this certain place for 38 long years. But yet, 
showing up 38 long years for every day, but yet he had no one that would take the time to make sure that he was the first one in the pool. Lord have mercy. Y'all help me work with this just for a, a few moments. Matthews presents Christ as the king. Mark presents him as a servant. Luke presents him as the man. But John presents him as the God. Here it is, our introduction in verse 1 through 4. Here it is right here. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called uh, in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down a certain time or the season into a pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. Can we just look at this for a few moments? When we look at this story, we find some things that draws us to this story. The first thing it says, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus felt that he needed or he felt that it was important enough for him to go up to Jerusalem. There was a feast going on. And then it describes to us, there was a sheep market. There was a, 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 a sheep gate where, where the sheep would, would go through and travel through to, to, to their way to be sacrificed in the temple. There was a pool. I, I just want to take my time to describe what was going on before we get to the, the man with the issue for 38 years. There was a pool called Bethesda, having five porches. Bethesda means uh, uh, a, a, a house of mercy. Now, I don't know about you, but any time I have trouble, and any time I'm going through whatever I'm going through, it's good to know that if I can get to the place called the house of mercy, okay? These porches... It was five, it was five, it was five, it was five porches. And said these porches had a, had a roof with, 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 with columns and, and used to support the structure of the roof. This is the place where you would find people sitting and lying during the daytime. All of them would be around somewhere around these five porches. In verse 3, we find that the people that showed up had a lot of things in common. We all show up at church, and believe it or not, some of us have the same thing in common. Oh, yes, and we would, we would, we would just admit to ourselves and admit to others. Some of us, we show up. Yes, and we put on a smile. Yes, and we raise our hands, and we say hallelujah to Jesus. But some of us, if we be honest, we are all going through something. And if we haven't went through one storm, we're coming out of another storm. We all have problems. So, so we find, we find, we find in this text that they all had problems. They all were sick and had some type of disability. They had diseases. They were, they were ill. Some of them had been coming for a long time. Some had been coming longer than others. But they showed up at the same place. Every single day. When I look at this, they said that they, they showed up and they were waiting for one thing. Mm, my God. Waiting for the moving of the water. Woo. Don't we show up at church? We show up to worship God, but you can't have worship until one thing show up. And that's the moving of his Holy Spirit. We can't pray without the move of the Holy Spirit. We can't sing until the move of the Holy Spirit. We, we can't worship until the Holy Spirit and God himself shows up. 
It says in verse 4, I got, I got to get through this, but it says, For an angel went down at a certain season into a pool, troubled the waters, and whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole. Whatever disease he had. Ah, my God, my God, my God. This, this was found to be an answer for people that they sought after. Okay. Sometimes some of the things we seek after and sometimes some of the things that we believe in is not necessarily Scripture or the Word of God. Okay. Some things we believe in, some things we attempt to uh, uh, believe in, does not necessarily mean that that's the way that God planned for us to seek him or to get our deliverance. They believe that the healing came from the angel stirring up the water. Question. Why did they have to man come for 38 years? They believe that the first one that stepped into the pool after the troubling of the waters was healed. My Bible teach me whosoever will, let him come. They said there are no signs of the people getting healed after the pool by waiting for the first one to step in. This looked like it was kind of being superstitious. I'm just saying, we all got certain things and certain ways we do things. But if the truth be told, is, is it actually the right way to seek God and to honor God and to ask God to do something for us? One thing I found out, that the word of God is the will of God. And the will of God is the word of God. I, 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 you can watch TV all you want. You can order all and buy all the healing water you want to drink. But I already know I don't need to buy no healing water. I know he's my healer. I know that, that, that by his stripes I'm healed. Come on somebody. This, this, this healing only took place in this scripture it only took place at a certain season all right all right, all right let's, let's ride let's ride let's ride point one the man had no expectation circle expectations to be healed but by being the first one to step into he had no expectation to be healed, but by being the first one to step into the pool. When you read this, go home, read it, and, 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 and exegete it, and, and, and whatever you want to do. But, but when you read it, look where the focus is. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's, ride. let's ride. Verse 5 and 6. It said, a certain and a certain man was there. No name. That's not important. Which had an infirmity for 38 years. So it tells us how long he's been coming. Now, 38 years is a long time. It says when Jesus saw him lie there. That's important. You need to circle that. When Jesus saw him and know that he had been now a long time in that case or in that condition, he said unto him, I love this. Jesus said unto him, Will thou be made whole? He asked nothing about no pool. He had not asked him how long he'd been coming there. He already knew. But all he asked him was these words. Will thou be made whole? Okay. Let me say this. I don't know what theology you may have. Put this in your pocketbook, in your wallet, in your pocket, whatever you want to put it in. Make sure you carry this home. When Jesus shows up in the midst, everything changes. I don't care what you believe in. 
I don't care what the doctor has said. I don't care what the report has said. I don't care what surgeries you have been going through. I don't want that. That doesn't bother me. When Jesus shows up, when Jesus shows up, everything changes. All right, so, 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 so he, he, this, this, this man, this, this man that, that, that's been sick for 38 years, paralyzed, he, he's been unable to walk. He came to the same place. Can you imagine coming to the same place for 38 years? That's almost like coming to church, sitting on the same pew for 38 years. You never raise your hand. You never, you never smile. You never thank Jesus. You never, you never, you never are, 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 are considered doing anything in the church. But you came to church for 38 years. If that's what you're happy with, then that's what you do. But I can't come to church for 38 years and never tell God, thank you. Never raise my hand like he never done nothing for me. That's just me. Okay. 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 Here, here, here go. Here go. He, 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 he came with the same plan every day with the same feelings, feeling sorry for himself every day. And no one helped him to get to the pool when the pool was troubled. He came uh, uh, looking or being looked over. And here it is. This is a mental health uh, 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 note right here. He began to see himself being useless. That's a bad feeling. That's a bad feeling. When life becomes so bitter that you feel useless. He, he, he felt that he, he was helpless and hopeless. Oh, my God. And, and what I like about Jesus is this, that he takes the little faith we have. And then he takes it and challenge us and challenge our condition to a point that he will change our lives forever. Here it is. What, what you can't see, God can see. What you can't do, God will do. Oh, my God. Here, 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 here it is. Here it is, church. Right here. Verse, verse 6 says, and when Jesus saw him. Oh, my, I, I love when, when people look over you. But when Jesus saw him. I, I, he, he, he been coming there 38 years. He's not the only one to have an issue. But here in this text. This is his day. This is his moment. This is his hour. It's not saying that Jesus didn't care about the others. But this man, some, I don't know what he did. I don't know what he said. I don't know how he got Jesus' attention. Maybe he didn't do anything. Had you ever had Jesus show up in your life and you didn't ask him to come to rescue, but somehow he showed up anyway? He loves you just that much. Some, Sometimes you don't have to call him. He, you, your credit is already good for him. You don't even have to call him by name. He, he knows his name. You don't even have to tell him what your problem is. He knows what your problem is. He already knows. Oh my God. So, so, so here it is. It says, it says in verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now. A long time. Okay, he knew he had in this. He said unto him, I love these profound, powerful, life living words. And what we have to understand as believers, we have to speak life over dead situations. Yes, he has given us the authority and the power to speak life in dead situations. Oh my, okay. You don't believe me? Follow me. He says these words, will thou be made whole? He, he didn't worry about 38 years. He didn't worry about someone carrying him and bringing him on a mat. He just said, will thou be made whole? I need a word from the Lord. Let me say that again. 
See, some people seek a word from people. Don't need to track nobody down. God has everything I need. And whenever I need a word, I pray. Whenever I need a word, I reach up towards heaven. Whenever I need a word over my situation, I begin to worship the Lord. Whenever I need a word from the Lord, I just fall down into my secret closet. Whenever I need a word, I don't know about you. I don't know what works for you. But when I need a word from the Lord, I invite the Lord to come where I am and then ask the Lord to take me to the place where you are. I need a word, I need a word, I need a word from the Lord. Never give up. Why? Because this is what the word says. The first shall be last. And the last shall be first. Catch that on the way home. And the Lord is speaking to you. Believe that the things are going to get better. Don't get bitter. Get better. When God shows up. He does what he does best. He shows out by any means necessary. God turns your situation around. Point two, point two, real quick. Stop. <laughs> ah, here you go. Woo. Point two. Stop waiting on someone else to do what God can do for you. I'm going to confess that's many times that I have complained. God, that I do this for someone, they don't do that for me. God, I go out of my way to do this favor, and favor never turn. God said this to me when he gave me this point. Stop waiting on someone else to do what God can do for you. Mm. Here it is, right here in verse 3. It said, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Now, we will pause there and look at that. I can't stay there long. That sounds like excuses to me. Because Jesus said, if, thou, if you want to be made, will thou be made whole? He asked them that question. The answer he got was, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. Do you look at the knowledge, I mean the theology and the way he's thinking? Sometimes our thinking influence our minds to a point that our minds tells us that I can't comprehend what the word of God can do because what the word of God is saying is not what my flesh is feeling. So my flesh is because I can't feel it and I can't see it, I don't believe it. But the word is saying, by faith, you got to believe and hope for and understand that whatever God speaks in your spirit develops in your heart, transformed into your mind, and your mouth speaketh. You got to declare that I am who I am by the grace of God. And I believe by faith of the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I'm not a cook, but I love to be in the kitchen. Why? Because I love the ingredients you put in the cake and the way that it smells. I do understand now that when I used to go into my grandma's kitchen, my grandma said, boy, walk soft. I got a cake in the oven. And you not to understand, even though I can't see it, I got to believe that that cake, when it comes out of the oven, it's going to be um, um, good. And that's the same way that God treats us according to his word. You got to believe it before it happens. You got to act like it's already there. Yes, you do. You got to claim your blessing before it happens. Stop waiting for it to fall in your lip and act like it's already there. Oh, my God. So here it is. 
This man had excuses. He said, no man to help me when the water is troubled. That's not what Jesus asked him. He said, I need someone to put me in the pool. They brought the man to the pool, but no one would make sure that he was the first one in the pool. Those that could run, they ran. Those that could walk, they walked. Those that could roll to the pool, they rolled. Those that could push, they pushed. And those that could pull, they pulled. But this man had no one to put him in the pool. And my closing right here, as I get ready to take my seat, I want you to understand as I close, here is the last point right here. Separation brings restoration and elevation. Let me say that again. Separation brings restoration and elevation. Verse 8 and 9, then I'm done. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Do that have anything to do with the pool, y'all? Huh? Do that have anything to do with paralyzed for 38 years? Do that have anything to do with I have no one to put me into the pool? I, I'm just asking the question. Okay. And immediately, the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath day. Let me close. Every now and then, you must have an attitude or by any means necessary. Let me say that again. Every now and then, people need to stop judging you by the frown sometime you have on your face. Sometime you got to take the time and realize that even though things falling around you apart, that's a good chance the quad is getting ready to put everything back together again. Do something that you never done before. Believe God like you had never believed him before. Have faith and according to his word, release your faith. Stand on the stand which his word is saying. God said it, he will do it. Listen to this. It takes time sometimes. Believe what God by any means necessary. Here it goes right here and I'm going to take my seat. Here it is. When God created the world by any means necessary. He took nothing and said, let there be light. And there was light. By any means necessary. He took man, blew dust into his, I mean, took the dust from the earth and blew into his nostrils. And man became a living soul. But by any means necessary. He called Adam told Adam, you go and wherever I send you and whatever I tell you to do, believe me by faith. He took Abraham and told Abraham, you go up into this mountain. Abraham said, look servants, y'all stay here until I come back. Abraham went up to the mountain and offered up his son Isaac as a living sacrifice by any means necessary. Moses, come here, Moses. Moses got to the Red Sea. Moses looked around and said, how will we cross the Red Sea? But by any means necessary. Look in your hand, Moses. Take the rod and throw it out across the Red Sea. And the Red Sea divided by any means necessary. Ah, come here. Come here, Nehemiah. Your Bible said, I've been working. It looked like we ain't going to never finish this wall. And God said, but by every enemies necessary. Nehemiah said, I can't come down. I won't come down. I got to work on this wall until it's built by any means necessary. Come here, Jonah. Jonah said, well, by any means necessary, I'm going to run from God. I'm going to hide from God. I'm going to get my ticket and I'm going to get on the ship 
and I'm going to disappear. But by any means necessary, he had a great fish to swallow up Jonah, spit Jonah out, and Jonah still went to Nineveh preaching the word of God. Come here, Paul. Paul said, look, I've been shipwrecked. And I told all the people on the ship when the ship fell all apart and all we had was boards floating around us. But Paul said, but by any means necessary. And the Bible tells me all up made it to shore on broken pieces. Come here, the woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years. She said, you know what? I know I don't supposed to be out in public, but I'm going to find my way to Jesus because I believe that any means necessary. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will and I shall be made whole. Come here, Jesus. Jesus on the cross and a thief on this side and a thief on that side. But he heard a sound, said salvation. Jesus stopped death and said, by any means necessary, told the thief on the cross, said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, hold up. Here we go. By any means necessary. They took him off the cross, put him in a poverty tomb. But Jesus said, but by any means necessary. Oh, death, where is thou sting? Oh, grave, where is thou victory? Then he promised us by any means necessary. Three days he got up with all power, all power, all power, all power in his hands. But by any means necessary. Anybody here need but by any means necessary enemies necessary <sighs> come here come here don't don't sit down on me come here come here cancer come here cancer come here cancer any cancer survivors here come here cancer any cancer survivors here come here cancer any cancer survivors here come here cancer come here huh yeah 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 don't tell me he won't do it. Don't tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he won't do it. But by any means necessary. Any means necessary. Any means necessary. Oh yeah, y'all, y'all. Y'all had to go through it. But listen, listen. Yeah, y'all went through chemo. Some of y'all going through surgery. Some of y'all lost some things you didn't want to lose. But I declare today as you stand before me, you need to shout, but by any means necessary. Y'all stay right there. Anybody lost some loved ones here lately? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on out in now. Anybody lost a loved one here lately? Come on. You thought it was the end of the world. You thought you'd never breathe again. You thought you'd never wake again. Oh, but I got news for you. But by any means necessary, he took and turned your situation around. He looked and let you know that you're not making it alone. You're not making it by yourself. He said, I'll be a father to the fatherless. He said, I'll be a, a mother to the motherless. By any means necessary, whatever it takes, He's able to handle it. Whatever you need, God has it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. But by any means necessary. Any means. Don't y'all don't move. Don't y'all move. Don't y'all move. Don't y'all move. Now, 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 now I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. But if there's anybody here today, that you know that if God don't work a miracle for you, it's all over. Anybody here today that you know, it may not be you, it may be somebody in your family, but is anybody here today know that if, if, if God don't work it for you, it's all over. Did you hear what I say? You need a miracle today. You don't need it next week. You don't need it next month. You don't need it the next year. But you need it at this moment. You need it today. 
Anybody here need a miracle? Anybody here want to believe God? Anybody here want to trust God? Anybody here say, Lord God, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. By any means necessary. By any means necessary doesn't mean you take matters in your own hands. By any means necessary doesn't mean you, take, you get violent. By any means necessary means that you would trust God to the extent that it has nothing to do with you, but it's all about Him. Every head bowed, every, bow, every eye closed. Anybody need prayer, you better, get, you better get up here somewhere because I feel the anointing of God in this place. Anybody need prayer? Anybody desire your prayer? This, 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 this is it. I ain't going to give this but one time. If it's, if it's you, 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 you need to come quickly. Move, move while God is moving. That's all I can say. Oh, Lord. Don't, 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 don't raise your hand. Please don't raise your hand. Amen. Don't, don't even say a word. Uh, let me give the invitation first. Is there one here today? Is there someone on Facebook and Zoom has never confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? The Bible said, whosoever will, let him come. Is there one here today for the gift of salvation? You can give the preacher your hand, but give God your heart. He said these words, that you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Thou shalt, thou shalt be saved. Is there one? Is there one for the gift of salvation? Okay. Is there one that wants to be a candidate for baptism? Is there one? Is there one for be the candidate for baptism? Is there one today on Zoom, Facebook, and in this sanctuary want to join this branch of Zion? You can come by letter or by Christian experience. Is there one? The last thing before I move on, please don't say a word. If you're here today, you have doctor's appointments, you're fearful you have procedures and you are frightened this is your word trust God release your fears and replace it with faith and God said he will see you through now, I don't know who you are I don't need to know who you are you know who you are but if you're here today, that you have procedures this week or doctor appointments, God said, trust him. Release your faith. Release your fears and replace it with, with faith in God. Father, I pray for this branch of Zion. Lord, I felt the tears, the hurt, the pain, Lord God, of those that are standing here today. And Lord, you say that the pain sometimes is because we sometimes don't release our pain and our fears. And it's okay to cry. Because crying is a cleansing. It's not a weakness. And we pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen every individual here today. Strengthen them, Lord God, of their fears. Strengthen them, Lord God, of what they feel as a loss. But give them the courage to understand that grieving is a process and a process takes time. Let them know, Lord God, that they never stand alone because you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
And then, God, you told us that we need to seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto us. And then, God, we celebrate the victory, Lord God, of all those that came. They are warriors and conquerors. And Lord God, we thank you for the evidence, Lord God, that even though, Lord God, this, this fearful and this thing called cancer, Lord, we still thank you for the victory that you had given so many of our people. And Lord, we pray that you would strengthen them to walk by faith and not by sight. Now, God, cleanse us, wash us, make us whole. Don't allow us, Lord God, to sit down there by the pool for 38 years. You've given us our word, Lord God. And you had told us, Lord God, will thou be made whole? And Lord, our answer today is yes. Make us whole. Make us complete. Make us, Lord God, feel, Lord God, restored. In your name we pray. We give glory. We give honor. And we give praise. In Jesus' name, we say thank you. Amen and amen. Can we give him a celebration of praise? As we get ready, amen. As Deacon Walker will come, lead us in the prayer. Again, thank you, Pastor, for that inspiring word by any means necessary. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, also, uh, with Kayla, uh, keep on allowing God to use you. Yield, yield to the Holy Spirit and be usable for God's purpose. And I know God is smiling, and I know one other man 
he be grinning from ear to ear right now. Amen. Amen. Our prayer list includes Sister Daphne Hill asks for prayer for herself, uh, Chelsea Trey, her granddaughter Jayla, for mental illness, anxiety, and depression. Our, requir our prayer request for Aunt Shirley Palmer, Connie Butler, daughters T and Tashia, Mother Rosemary Allen and brothers, the Brown family. Sister Burnett Pickett asks for prayer for Sean Bridges. Shan Ma'am? Okay. And Shanika. Okay. And family, Charlotte Baptist Church and little Jody. Amen. I might pronounce it wrong, but God knows. God knows. Amen. Pray for the Tad family, Roger Pickett, uh, Shirley and Conway Wynn. Uh, Sister Mia asks a prayer for herself that God will strengthen her and heal her. Also want to ask for prayer for her mother, her Aunt Marion, and all of the family. Sister Marion Warrell asks for continued prayer for the Warrell, Boys, and Camel family. Please pray. Prayer go out to Mia Boys and Edith Nevins. Sister Victoria Lawrence is asking for prayer for her husband, Stephon Lawrence, her daughter, Sherelle Perry, her son, Ronald Perry, her grandson, Andrew Perry, and Jessica Perry, Sadie Lovick, and all her brothers and sisters, and everyone going through the loss of a loved one. Sister Carolyn Carey asks for prayer. Uh, pray for her, the James and Braxton and Carey family, the pastor and his family. Pray for her Aunt Shirley, who will be going home tomorrow. Amen. Also, the earring, uh, also the earring belongs to her. Amen. So, so it's, it's still up here. Uh, Sister Edith Bun Bundy, I'll uh, ask for continued prayer for Deacon Lewis James, Brother Mark Pickett, and Deacon Levi Wallace. Sister Anita Lockley, ask for prayer for our pastor, Dr. Myron Sutherland, First Lady Gillian Sutherland, and their entire family. Mother of our church, Deaconess Hazel Pierce, the Lockley, Pickett, and Strong family. Continue to pray for the Shadow Baptist Church praise team, upper room and touch prayer ministry, and all other ministers at Shadow Baptist Church. Prayer request for Anaya, Cindy, and Earl Strong, and the entire uh, Strong household. For Sister Dottie Jackson and her family, Sister Suzanne Ferguson and the Ferguson family, uh, Brother Quentin Wynn and his wife Jack, Vanessa Lawrence, Tyron Hall, and her daughter, Lentoya Dumfries. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Marvin Gaye wrote a song. It was called Trouble Man. He said three things was for sure. Taxes, death, and trouble. So, what can man do? We can think of heavenly things. And what the Spirit brought back to me, being though <clears throat> we're having communion in his house, uh, and it was referred to originally as the Last Supper, in heaven, in Revelations, 19th chapter, talked of the great wedding festival. Jesus told parables in the gospel, in the gospels, of a wedding festival. Okay, so why is that important? 
If you look at Jewish tradition from that point, there was three parts. The first part was called uh, be brothel. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. But that's when the brides, the, I'm sorry, the grooms or the man's family would bring gifts to the bride's family for marriage. That was called the engagement. So what does that have to do with spiritually? God gave his son as a betrothal. Am I, am I pronouncing that right? But y'all know what I'm talking about. For the world. The second part was the groom would go home, would go prepare a place for he and his bride. Then he would come back for his bride. What does that have to do spiritually? Jesus is now, uh, I forget which one of the epistles where it says, that you hear that every uh, 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 funeral, that I go in to pre prepare a place for you so that where you, that where I am, you may be also. But Jesus is preparing a place for us. The church is the bride. Okay? Then the third part was the festival. Okay? So Jesus is preparing a place for us. Then he's going to come back and rapture the church unto him. That's the second part. The third part is the festival of the, uh, it's part of the, the wedding process. So that was after the, the marriage, when Jesus comes back for his church without spot or wrinkle. Okay, why is that important? Because all believers, we're part of the church, and we're going to be part of that great festival. Okay? So, why marriage? Jesus' first, Jesus first miracle was at a wedding festival. That was not by accident. It didn't just happen. Okay? But I'm not going to get into that. Okay? But why, why a bride and groom? Why God used that? symbolically. Why? Because God intended for marriage for a man to love his bride as he loves himself. God is love. The man is supposed to provide for his wife. Jehovah Jireh. God a uh, man is supposed to protect his bride, Jehovah Raha. Amen. So when you think about uh, heavenly things and what's in store, and when we get to heaven, we will see that the reward that we receive in heaven and look back on what we went through, there is no comparison. Amen. I hope somebody got that and received that. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, the Lord of heaven and earth. Father God, as again we come before you. Father God, we just lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. Father God, we just thank you for your manifold blessings, realizing that every good and perfect gift comes from thee. And Father God, we just thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard, Father God. Thank you for this worship service this morning, Father God. Thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for those who have come to witness and to share. Father, we ask a special blessing upon them, their household, Father God. And, and, and Father God, we just uh, thank you for your grace and, and your mercy. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus. Father God, you have heard the petition of the prayers, Father God. You already know all about them. You already know what they stand in need of. Father God, we ask that you would, Father God, give them 
the desires of their heart, Father God. We know that you are a healer, Father God. We know that you are a provider, Father God. And we'll be careful, Father God, to give your name the praise. And Father God, we ask that you continue to bless Shiloh, bless us individually, bless us collectively, Father God. Father God, you know what we stand in need of. And Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for being God and God all by yourself, Father God. We pray that everything that is said, everything that was done is pleasing in our sight. And Father God, we pray that something was said or done here this morning, Father God, that would touch somebody's heart, would encourage them, Father God. And Father God, and for those who don't know you and are part of their sins, Father God, we ask that you would touch their hearts so that they may come running and asking, what must I do to be saved? These things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Walker. As we get ready for communion, uh, once again, I want to uh, thank our last person that presented our Black History Moment, uh, Raquel. God bless you. Beautiful writing. Amen, that you shared with us. And also I want to uh, continue to thank uh, those that uh, had blessed First Lady during the, lo the loss of her brother. And also uh, the last two Sundays I have shown up, I've been get, still getting cards and things for birthday. I thank you. I don't take that lightly. I thank you for uh, your love that you have shared uh, during those moments. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you very much. Okay, let us focus on communion as we get ready to commune together. Sunday and the month of February, he teaches us that as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. But Paul also instructs us to examine ourselves. If there's any uh, grudges or animosity or any hidden sin that may be in our hearts that he tells us to ask for forgiveness before we commune together. Matter of fact, he even warns us and tells us that we should not take communion lightly. He tells us that that's even some sick and even died not being respectful to communion. But communion is a sacred time. It's a celebration time of the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It takes us to the cross, but it also takes us from the cross. It takes us to the grave, but thank God it takes us from the grave. That's why it says as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Father, we thank you for the elements that has been prepared. Pray, Lord God, that as we use the bread and the wine, that it will be used, Lord God, to symbolize your, your body and your blood. Now, God, bless 
these elements, Lord God, that as we celebrate your death and as we celebrate your burial, we can also celebrate your resurrection. Bless all of this, Lord God. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Violets. And we pray that as we dismiss, that God will bless and rain on you with his love, his joy, and peace as you walk out of those doors and into a world that is waiting for the blessings of the Lord. May peace and joy be with you until we meet again. Consider yourselves dismissed. Church say